all right all right what's going on everybody um back with another video today tackling a couple questions um question one um this is about one itis um i describe one itis as um being obsessed about getting out one project um so this person is having a hard time um knocking out this project and just it sounds like it's really lengthy and um, a lot of work to do so they're wondering um, how to get out of that funk of just having one project that they're, they're putting all their time in um, so for this um, what I would say to get out of one itis um, is if if it's possible to take a break from the project take a break from it and start some smaller projects um, for me, doing this feature film this year, um, it is a big project. Um, I'm pretty particular about it. But in the meantime, I'm knocking out like a whole bunch of other smaller projects, uh, short stories, short films, and just get into the the, um, the process of completion. Um, the thing about um, I, I read somewhere. That they said their best marketing, your best marketing is your next film or your next book. So that is, um, it's kind of like a saying so that you can always get, keep going towards the next thing. Um, if you're going to put a lot of time to make one thing perfect, um, you're not going to be able to get into that rhythm of um, completing and learning the other sides of the business. Um, especially if this is your first thing, uh, you really just want to get it to a point where you ask yourself, did it say what I wanted to say? Then let's just get it out. Um, even if you're not finished with it, if you just find that you're like unmotivated to keep working on it, um, then then try to cut, cut it where it's at. Um, finish, find a good place to end it. And if you had more for ideas, use it in the next time. If you even want to use it in the next time, um, you may come up with different ideas. Uh, but really, you want to just be able to see what kind of response your art's getting, what kind of um, what what completing it, what completing a story does for you, um, be it a film, be it a book, or a song. You know, don't don't get one itis and just get caught up on the one thing that you're working on to represent pretty much the whole scope of your creativity because that's not how it works. Um, you got to do a lot of things and you want to have a big body of work to reference and and you don't have to be so nitpicky about one. So um, definitely if it's your first thing that you're in your, you know, that's understandable. You're worried about how your first thing's coming off. But at some point you got to, you got to stick a fork in it and call it, call it done, you know? Um, because, like, I'm going to tell you guys a lot. Um, it's about being prolific, not perfect. Um, and everything represents that, you know. I've seen people who have YouTube channels where, yeah, they made a couple great, great videos that have tons of details and topics. Um, they got a good amount of subscribers. But the formula on it is, is going to, to me, it seems like burnout because every single one that they're putting out is, is super high quality. And I'm not saying don't deliver quality to your fans. I'm saying have a variety of of different um mediums that you're you're going towards, you know? You know, if you were an artist in the the 70s or 80s and you wrote comic comics, well maybe you could have a comic book strip that was in the Sundays um that, you know, was just like some some side story you have that you can break down because you have some funny characters that would keep you busy while you're maybe working on a graphic novel for something that you're you're really invested in um you can have multiple stories going on that show different sides of yourself and just just stay stay on top of it stay on top of um making something work and last um so that's that's if you're in control of the project. Now, if it's a project that you're in collaboration with and you don't have the freedom to, um, you know, just release it or finish it like that, 
Um, another thing you can do is start to scale back your time. You know that, that you're going to be devoting to that. Like, hey, you know what? I got picked up on uh, this other project that I'm pretty excited about. Uh, I'm down to finish it, but pretty much let me know what you need to get from me to get to the next point that I can get on my next project. Um, and, you know, depending on, on the client or whatever, they, they may have something to say, but I've, I've dealt with even um, pretty demanding clients that understand when you have new money coming in that you can't just keep going back to revise whatever they, they want. Because, you know, and really when I see a lot of revisions and, you know, a lot of changes and, you know, people are going back and forth on the story and they're, they're just indecisive. That just means to me that they don't have something else coming up next. Because if when you do have things going on, you're going to be too busy worrying about, you know, A, B and C when you've already made it. I say one or two revisions max. Um, usually nothing too structural, just little edits and little quirks here and there that you might want to take out. But after the second one, you're, you're almost just wasting your time uh, because that, that energy that you're going into creating something that you've already made could have been gone into doing your next thing. Um, and you're only, you're only as famous as your last hit. Um, so if that's your hit and you're a one hit wonder, that's it. But, you know, for me, I like to keep a lot of things going so that nothing has its, um, all my eggs in its basket, riding on some type of success from that. So, you know, like having one project, that's too close to none. And having two is too close to one. So really you want to have everything kind of rolling out in threes. Um, you know, you want to have two things in the chamber while you're trying to, to work out something because it's going to put you in the power position to really um, try to make these moves efficiently um, because everything's finite. You know, time's finite. We don't have time to keep going back and revising um, every story we write or else you'll never get any out. Um, like I said, two max and then keep it pushing. Um, so don't get stuck up on one itis. Definitely want to have things moving forward, but keeping new ideas fresh in the chamber um, is going to help you combat that. Um, another question we have. Um, when doing auditions, like you did for your feature film, what are key things that you look at? Um, this is from an aspiring act actress. So, I, a little bit of background about me. I've, um, I was a child actor. Uh, I did, I've been on a lot of auditions and um, castings and, you know, plays, theater, commercials. Um, I was in ER a bit. Pretty, pretty, yeah, I had a lot of gigs on ER. They would use me for a lot of different child stuff. Um, but the thing is, is it's very similar to a job interview. Um, there is a creative aspect to it, you know, you definitely do want to have your performance down and your lines down and, you know, put emotion into your words. But what I found definitely while this is still fresh on my mind, because I literally just did um, seven or eight hours of auditions on Sunday. What we find is a lot of things we were going off of people once they had the basic character and performance down was personality um, because if it comes between picking somebody who has a okay performance but every direction you give them is phenomenal and somebody that has a really great performance in the audition but they have sort of an ego and their direction you can just tell that their direction taking ability is not going to go far you're going to want to go with the person that can take direction because as and during the audition, you know, we're as actors, you're getting the scripts and you're thinking everything is locked and this is how it's going to be when I show up. But as directors and writers, we may and producers, we may have to, to switch things around according to budget, according to time, according to whose performances are working and who's available and a lot of different things. So um, 
we may cut certain things that that maybe you nailed in the audition but we may need you to like do different things or different ways to do it so um four things you're, you're going to look at for key in auditions um getting remember memorize your lines if you can um if not that's okay but at least have a couple good tone inflections while you're reading it two I would say dress to impress a little bit. Dress cool. Um, dress young because it's just it's just gonna come off like when people show up and they're just like in, in a sweat pant, sweatshirt and jeans or something and they didn't really like put themselves together too much. It just it, the whole feel of it is is um it doesn't doesn't come off too too good, you know. It, it seems like you don't maybe care about um trying to get the role i mean even for me as a um, producer I, I dressed up for it you know i shaved that's why i've got you know i'm shaved right now um because we do want to put our best best image and best foot forward at the start of the project um so try to memorize your lines dress nice um don't say too much about just don't try to keep it brief you know come in introduce yourself get to your your thing get out maybe say one quirky cool thing um but um there's definitely people that kind of talk to themselves out of um out of roles um we've had one guy come in dude i barely know my lines i've been doing this i've been running around i got to die i got this other job came into the audition all flustered and we're like yeah this isn't gonna work that's the first thing you tell us is that you you didn't you didn't you're not familiar with the script next you know um another person um they just said a few things that kind of gave this pretentious air to them and we liked their voice and even looking back i was still like yeah her voice is cool but i can just see like she said a little too much that revealed that you may be difficult to work with and if you can't even hold back getting things out like that during an audition you probably are a little bit difficult to work with because an audition is not the place to have the, that kind of character shine through through conversation you want to really just make it short um and simple and number four the fourth thing um definitely be on time um, be early if you can. Five five to ten minutes. Don't be dramatically early because you're throwing us off a little bit. But five minutes is usually appreciated. Um, because then we can end that a little early and have some time to, you know, ourselves to go over some notes. So, number one, lines. Definitely be familiar with the script. Number two, dress nice. Three, keep conversation short. And four be on time five to ten minutes early if you can um those are my like seriously not enough people do that that well in auditions for acting but in life in general um a lot of people talk themselves out of everything they talk themselves out of dates they talk themselves out of jobs they talk themselves out of promotions um they don't dress for impress you know and they don't familiarize themselves with the material everything i just told you about killing an audition you can apply to a job interview instead of lines do your research about the company dress obvious um coming on time obvious and keeping things short during the interview process perfect you know if anything you want to be asking more questions to them than talking um so yeah those are my two th two things today we'll be back more like and subscribe um click the bell email me any questions 24 creative at gmail and we got the patreon if you have any more if you want us to do any videos for your questions all right thanks stay tuned